Hey everyone, uh, my name's Kelvin and today I'm going to show you how to use the salted watercolor effect for Photoshop. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to make two different images. The first one's going to be just a basic one like this and then towards the end of the video we're going to make one like this and we're going to go over some of the more advanced options uh, with the masks and I'll also show you how to add those water drips at the bottom. So the first thing you'll do is download that zip folder and then go ahead and unzip it. And inside there's two Photoshop documents and a README. Uh, we're going to start with the vertical effect, um, but these are both the same effect. It's just that the document is horizontal in this one and vertical in this one. So it just depends on what kind of poster you want to make. So we'll drag it into Photoshop to start here. So it comes loaded with this uh, default picture. And to uh, change it with your own, you need to place your image into the smart object. So the smart object, uh, you can find that in the layers panel. So you'd go to Window, and then Layers, and then uh, it's this one here. So we'll double click on the Smart Object to open it up, and it'll open up as a separate Document tab. And uh, right now there's a few masks already turned on to give it that drip effect, and also this little border here. And uh, all these folders are masks. They're totally optional. You don't have to use them. Uh, they're just there to save you some time. So we'll turn them off here. First we'll turn off the drips one, uh, and then also this uh, border one here, the rectangle one and we'll delete this image, the default image. And then I found this image of a sailboat and I think I'll use that for our first little uh, demo here. So I'll copy that and then paste it in. And it's a little small so I'll scale it up. And I'm going to use this with the square mask uh, which is going to be, the mask itself is going to be a little bit too big so I'll show you how to scale the masks. So once we're happy with the image size I'll do enter uh, and then I'll turn on the rough square mask just like that. Actually I think I'll use the grunge mask. So I'll select that, turn it on, and then you'll see that th this mask, uh, you know, it's, it's, the image isn't big enough so the mask is actually going up here. So we'll just shrink the mask a little bit. So we'll open up that folder and then we'll select the mask. This is the layer mask right here. So we'll click it and then what, once it's selected it can be transformed just like basically any shape. So we'll go over here to edit, transform, and then scale and then we can just scale it down. And we'll use it to kind of frame our sailboat a little bit. Also try to keep it centered on the page. Uh, I'll move this a little bit, the picture here. Okay, so once you're happy with uh, what it looks like back here in the smart object, you'll close and save the smart object to apply the effect. So we'll X out of the tab here and we'll do yes. And uh, depending on your computer, it could take two to four minutes for this effect to load. And uh, while it's loading, it might display a kind of a messed up image back here, but don't worry about that. It'll, it'll look fine when it's all done. And uh, I'll fast forward it to save time here. Uh, so this is the effect. This is the final effect uh, once it's been applied. And we're back in the original document now. And uh, this document has a few options. Uh, all these folders here that are highlighted green, these are just different effects you can turn on and off by changing the visibility. I think for this one I'll start by darkening it. It's looking a little bit light so I'll go to on off dark colors and I'll uh, turn that on. And that darkened it just a little bit and uh, I'm planning on printing this out so I think that having the paper texture in the background is a little bit redundant. Uh, so in this, this last folder here that's the paper texture. If we turn that off uh, it'll hide that. And then up here we have some more texture options here we can turn on a paper texture just for this watercolor effect uh, and that'll darken it up a little bit more as well. Uh, and then if you want less, actually less texture, uh, less of this salted effect, you can turn on these, this less texture and less salt uh, and that'll make it a lot more smooth. But I think I, I like those effects for this. So we've got the cold press texture turned on and the darker colors turned on and I'm pretty happy with this result. So how you treat the image next sort of depends on what kind of project you're doing. Uh, this is an RGB document, so if you're planning on printing this out or sending it to somebody to print, uh, I really recommend you convert it to CMYK. And I think the easiest way to do that is to save this uh, on your desktop as a JPEG and then open it again in Photoshop and then change it to CMYK that way. So you can save it by going up to File, Save for Web, and uh, it'll remember the uh, original resolution here, so you don't have to change that. Just make sure this is at JPEG. Uh, and then we'll save it to our desktop. And uh, I'll just drag it back into Photoshop to open it again. 
So there we go. I think, you know, I've tried a lot of different ways of converting it. My, my favorite way to convert images to CMYK is to go up to Edit, Convert to Profile, and then make sure Working CMYK is selected. Uh, and then you can uh, do OK. And uh, for most images, not much will change with the colors. Other images, more will change. Uh, but uh, I still recommend changing it to CMYK because your results with printing will be much more uh, consistent. So hopefully this is a pretty good overview on the basic options. Uh, for this next project, I'll show you a little bit more about the masks, and I'll also show you how to have that watercolor drip at the bottom of the picture. So new project, uh, new document here. I closed all the other ones, uh, and I'll just open up this uh, vertical effect again by dragging it in. And I'll go ahead and open up that smart object, and then turn off these uh, default masks here, the drips and the rectangle mask and I'll also uh, hide this image. And uh, I'll select it so this image I, I paste in will be pasted in down here automatically. So I'll drag it in and scale it up here. I think the number one problem uh, that can happen that might confuse you is if your image accidentally ends up up here and then you want to use one of these masks. But if the image is above the mask, uh, it won't mask it. So make sure your images are down here and I'll turn on the square mask and uh, there it's just on the edges but again same thing my image is a little bit small I think I'll scale the mask down though instead of scaling the image up so I'll open up that folder and select the layer mask and then I'll go to edit transform scale and something like that enter and then I'll move it down so it covers up the top there now this image has a little bit of a perspective here so I'll actually transform it out no, that's totally optional though. Of course, it depends on what kind of image you're using. But to get rid of this perspective, I'll select the image and I'll go to Edit, Transform, and Distort here. And then I can kind of tug the corners and straighten it out so it looks like the picture was taken more head on. So I'm happy with that. I'll do Enter. And now I'll add those drips on the bottom. So I'll turn on this drips mask. And then I want to move those up, so I'll open that folder and select the actual mask here. Uh, and then with the Move tool, I can move it up like this and kind of position it where I want. Now it looks like my image isn't, isn't really long enough. You know, the very bottom of my image is here, but the actual mask goes on further. So the, I think the best thing to do is to actually selectively scale part of this image. I'll just stretch out the bottom. And uh, to do that, you first want to make sure your image is rasterized. So in this case, it's not. Since I didn't paste this in, I actually dragged it in from my desktop. It's still linked to that image. Uh, so I'll right-click it here and then do Rasterize Layer. Now it's just like a regular image. And I can go to the Selection Box tool here. I'll select the bottom, something like that. And then I'll stretch it out by going to Transform and then Scale. And I'll just stretch it like this. There we go and then enter and deselect and also uh, I want to make sure that this bottom area of the image is really dark too because this watercolor effect it pretty much ignores really light colors so right where we have these drips coming together where this waterfall is which is already pretty light uh, I think that the watercolor effect might kinda wash out this area so if you notice in the end result that parts of your image are like they're too light uh, then you should use the burn tool. So what I'll do is while the image is selected I'll go over here to this little uh, kind of pinch, pinchy fingers kind of icon uh, and I'll select that and then I can just tap it and you see wherever I tap it it just sort of darkens the image just a little bit. So I'll do that all along the bottom and a little bit on this edge too because it's kind of light and up here I think too. So I'm pretty happy with this. I, I like the way the drips are looking here. I'll just uh, X out and uh, apply the effect. So here we go. Here's our final result. I think I'll give it a more neutral tone and uh, turn this effect on. I think I'll turn on the cold press texture. And uh, I'll turn off the background texture. And here's our result. I'm pretty happy with this. Uh, as far as the colors and stuff, the same thing goes. Uh, is what we did with the previous project there where we converted it to CMYK. It just depends on your final project, but if you're printing it, 
I really recommend you uh, change it to CMYK. But hopefully this is a pretty good overview of how you can use this uh, Photoshop effect to create some kind of unique artwork here. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, just uh, leave a comment below or send me an email. But uh, other than that, guys, thanks for your support and thanks for watching.